Hello, 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 hey. everyone. Welcome to How Music Charts. Uh, this is our owned and operated chart metric live stream that we have once a month. Uh, my name is Jason. This is. I'm Michelle. Um, and uh, we want to say hi. Uh, welcome. Uh, we have Mike Warner in the chat. Mike, how are you, <laughs> sir? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Mike Warner uh, is a, a good friend of the company, of course. Was, if you've been with um, Chartmetric in terms of a user, um, he's been very much a, a huge part of us. And of course, he's here um, watching us from San Diego, sending us love. So thanks, Mike, for, for showing up. Uh, everyone on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, if you want to say hi in the chat, please do. Um, please, uh, if you have any kind of comments you want to share, why don't you say uh, you know, your name and where you're from, where you're listening from today. Uh, that'd be great. We just want to say uh, hi and make sure that you guys are included uh, in this conversation we're going to have today. Um, let's do some intros real quick, Michelle, if that sounds good. Do you want to introduce yeah. yourself first? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. Um, I am on the biz dev side at Chartmetric. Um, Mike, we miss you. I see his comment down there. Um, but also running our kind of education program, uh, which is what we're here to talk about today. I used to be with a team in New York, um, which is where Jason is, but now I'm in Amsterdam for the moment. But yeah, um, back over to you, Jason. Um, my name is Jason Hoven. I'm the senior product manager at Chartmetric. Um, and so what that entails just kind of being this layer between the more technical, like engineering side of our company, um, the really smart folks who are kind of gathering all this music data and, and organizing it and displaying it in a really cool, engaging way. And then also talking to, you know, some of our external kind of stakeholders, obviously our users and people who can use some of the intelligence that we have. Um, I'm based in New York City, um, as Michelle, I think, mentioned uh, when she was here, based with us in New York City um, and still here. Um, the weather's nice today, uh, which we're very happy about. Uh, for those of you who are new uh, to Chartmetric and maybe have never seen this uh, live stream before, um, Chartmetric is a music data company. We uh, provide an application and access to it um, that basically is a market intelligence tool for anyone involved in the music business. So we use information from places like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and we kind of display it in a way that you can access on your phone or on your laptop. Um, to kind of understand followers and monthly listeners and kind of the audiences of music artists and playlists around the world. That's us in a nutshell, but um, Rooker, uh, who's our live stream producer today, he's going to run a really quick company teaser um, to give you kind of more of a visual idea of what we do. Music is more omnipresent than ever. People consume music without borders and interact with artists across so many different channels. Everything is changing, and we are dealing with more data than ever in music history. Chartmetric is here to simplify the digital music landscape. We bring you the latest data from dozens of platforms and connect it, so you can focus on spotting trends and gathering insights. Track your audience across the entire digital spectrum from one simple-to-use dashboard, and unlock powerful analytics to amplify your reach. Explore all this and more at chartmetric.com. Awesome. Thank you, Rucker. So now that uh, we have that, um, please feel free to ask questions about Chartmetric kind of generally in the chat. Um, we'll be happy to answer them either now or kind of towards the end of the live stream. Uh, but for now, I, I want to introduce today's theme. So usually every month we try to have a theme to our live stream. And today it's education um, and learning. So I think one of the things that uh, our job is at this company is to kind of let people know the use of music data um, because it's such a big part of the music industry today. It's something that, you know, was usually just billboard charts or, you know, how many CDs were sold, you know, not too long ago. At least it doesn't seem too long ago to, to people like me. Um, but now with so many different kind of digital platforms out there, it's kind of everywhere. So one of the jobs we have is to kind of educate folks on, you know, how much of a time saver it can be. I think with having, you know, 20 plus platforms on a platform like Chartmetric, um, it can get a little dizzying. So I think a big part of our job is to simplify that. Um, and a lot of times that's including, you know, letting people know like what certain terms are, or what the meaning or the different nuances between platforms are. Another thing too is kind of being very cognizant that a lot of times music data can be very intimidating. So that's something that we're very uh, conscious of. Um, you know, 
when we display a bar chart or a pie chart or show you different rows of the history of a, a playlist that you're familiar with, we try to do it in a way that's easy to interact with. Um, so that's a big part of our job too. So education and learning is such a big um, thing for us that we wanted to do more than just provide the app that we have. We also wanted to kind of attack that problem from a, a, a very purely educational perspective. And that's what we want to talk about today. Uh, we have a new website called, uh, well, not called, but it's at learn.chartmetric.com. Uh, Michelle, who's here in the chat with me, it's been her, her lead. She's been the lead on this project uh, for the past few months and has put a lot of work into it. So, um, you know, I'll let her introduce uh, more of like the structure of the website and its contents to you um, because she can do it much better than, than I can. So Michelle, without any further ado, please uh, feel free to take it over. Thanks, Jason. Um... And it's, yeah, I've taken the lead on this project, but it's definitely involved many people working on it together. So thank you to everyone who has um, worked with me on this too. It's definitely not a one person thing. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here to show what the website looks like. So this, the URL is learn.charmetric.com. And it is basically, we created it to have like a learning hub, a centralized place where you can find all the resources, to learn everything you need to know about Chartmetric, how to use it, what's new, what's available, um, what you can do with the platform as well. Um, so this is, I mean, the slogan really is about advancing um, future leaders in music with the power of data. That's the idea behind the um, product of Chartmetric as well. And so you can see at the top, um, just to go over a few of the things that are available that we have an academic initiative. Um, and this is really for partnering with music education institutions, uh, music business programs, universities, academic centers, that kind of thing. Um, if you are part of one or if you run one and you'd like to work together with us to be able to provide access to Chartmetric to your students, your program, your faculty. Uh, and we can also do other things like class talks, um, projects together, case studies. We've done a lot and we're always happy to figure out other ways that we can help. Um, and so we've just wanted to also showcase some of our partners um, with this program as well, uh, because they're all really good programs. If you're looking as well to learn more about music business, data in the music business as well, each of them has their own component as part of their program and we recommend them as well. You can click out, each of their logos is clicked out um, to their pages as well. Um, but yeah, this is just the initiative and trying to pull everything together as much as possible. There are some opportunities when we hear about them. We also like to showcase them here. There have been a bunch from Universal lately, but we're not showcasing any particular companies, just what's available in our network that we want to be able to share with you as well. And then the other reason um, outside of like providing learning resources in a centralized area. So you can see here the resources section, there are different ways to get introduced to Trimetric to learn more about different features on the platform and even just how to use it in general. Um, built a glossary as well to really do that introduction um, to the terms that might not be as familiar in this section. For example, even if you've been in the music business for a while, but maybe data is a relatively new thing and you want to kind of like slowly get into that as well, you can go through the glossary and see a lot of the terms that you'll probably become familiar with soon. And then this can also kind of all culminate in the certification, which is the other reason for creating um, this learning hub. We have, we've seen over the past years um, and months that people were adding Chartmetric to their resumes um, and also job descriptions were having it as like a software that people maybe should uh, learn how to use um, in order to help them find an opportunity in work and something like that. So that's why we figured we could formalize the process. And so we built this certification to be able to have both sides, but whether you're applying for a job or looking to hire someone, um, you can confirm that as long as they have they have been certified in Trimetric that they do know how to use the platform as well. And so that's what this is about. Um, everything that you need to get certified is available on this website in the resources section that I highlighted just now. You can join one of the programs that we're partnered with and they can definitely help you learn a lot more in addition to other parts of the industry. But you don't have to. I just want to emphasize that because I've had a few questions and so I have added here that 
this is public and open to everyone. All the resources are free because we don't want to keep prevent anyone from being able to learn, which is the idea of this. And so if you are interested in getting certified, you can check out the details here. Um, take the exam if you like out from this button. Uh, but again, just wanted to emphasize that it's open and anyone can access it. And then as long as you pass the exam, you'll have a certification that you can add to LinkedIn or whatever social platform that you wanna share on. Um, and hopefully that can also help you find your next opportunity in this industry or in a field that you're interested in as well. Um, but yeah, that's the idea behind the platform. And then whatever we can do to help showcase you as well, whether it's projects that we've worked on, like Make Music Equal, which is an equity initiative or past projects that we've done with other um, institutions as well, or programs, whatever we can do to help showcase um, you as well and help you find your way um, in music and data, that's what this Learning Hub was created for. So also if you have any questions or you wanna get in contact, work together, not sure about anything, even if something's broken on the website, feel free to just get in touch with us. We wanna hear from you as well and see what we can do together. Pass it back over to you, Jason. Cool. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, we'll say it again. It's it's learn.trapmetric.com. You should see it in the chat. Um, feel free to check it out, and please feel free to share it. Um, and just know that this is you know for not only university students but also continuing you know professionals who are trying to educate themselves. Uh, I think that's a really important part of the business is always kind of keeping yourself updated on kind of like the latest and greatest when it comes to, you know, your knowledge of, of your field. So that's what we'll try to focus on. You know, we'll, we, I think we focus a lot on some of the fundamentals and, and things that, you know, can get you started in music and data um, if you're not already familiar with it. But um, please um, check it out and let us know what you think. Um, I'm about to introduce our two guests today, which is kind of the meat of today's uh, talk. And I'm very excited to, to bring them on board. Um, you know, one of the things about, you know, education and, and what we do as a company is, you know, it's somewhat limited because we're not a, a great, you know, top music business school that, uh, we, that we have, you know, um, our guests from. Uh, so Berkeley College of Music and New York University are two of the top institutions when it comes to today's music industry. And, you know, some of the brightest minds preparing themselves for the world of music and, and tech disruption um, that faces us all. But you know, a lot of these folks who are coming coming through these really great programs, they need their professors to guide them on their path. And so I want to introduce today Professor Tanya Butler and Professor Carlos Chirinos. I'll go ahead and, and read the bios for them. Uh, Professor Tanya Butler, JD LLM, is chair of the Music Business Management Department at Berkeley College of Music. She's the first woman and the first person of color to lead the department in its 30-year history. A seasoned veteran of the music business, Butler has more than 14 years of expertise as an entertainment attorney and record label executive, as well as 16 years of undergraduate and graduate level teaching experience. She has a Juris Doctorate from California Western School of Law and a Master of Laws in Entertainment and Media from Southwestern University School of Law, Fitzwilliam College, Cambridge, England. Butler is an, also an award-winning motivational speaker, Toastmaster, and author of the self-published career guide, The Music Business is Corrupt, or Maybe You Just Can't Sing. She also hosts a weekly podcast on the business and legal aspects of the music industry entitled The Bomb, Business of Music Bootcamp Podcast. Welcome, Professor Butler. Thanks for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Jason, for having me. For sure. We also have today with us Professor Carlos Chirinos. Carlos Chirinos' work explores innovation and creativity in emerging global music industries, looking at the role of music in public health, international development, and social change. He's been a key consultant for radio and music projects in Europe, Africa, and Japan, with funding from the World Bank, USAID, and, Internet, and the International Development Research Center, the Welcome, Crust, the Welcome Trust, and the Toyota Foundation. He was awarded the Director's Teaching Prize at SOAS, University of London in 2009. Carlos also re received an award from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, the CDC, US Department of Defense, and USAID, to develop Africa Stop Ebola, a global music campaign to raise awareness about Ebola in West Africa that was featured in the New York Times, The Guardian, BBC, and CNN. Born in Caracas, Venezuela, he studied clarinet and saxophone before relocating to London to work as the international business development manager for an independent South American record label. He was also the founder of SOAS Radio, a digital radio station at SOAS University of London, where he taught in the departments of music and development studies. Carlos is also a composer, producer, and performer. Professor Carlos Chirinos, welcome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, you know, again, thank you both for spending time with us today. Um, I, I want to say if anyone else has questions in the chat for, for either of our guests today, please feel free to share it um, and we'll hopefully get to it. Uh, Professor Butler, I'd like to start with you. Um, sure. So at Berkeley, uh, you teach the Music Industry Trends and Special Topics course. Is that right? MB433, yes. if, I'm, if I'm a That's student right. there and trying to enroll, uh, <laughs> which is a major elective for the music business students there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the class's goals? Sure, absolutely. Well, as you know, you know, it's, it can be challenging to stay up to the minute on music industry trends. Um, although we have a world-class faculty and what I believe is a world-class curriculum, um, it's, you know, it's difficult to change um, a course's curriculum every single semester. It can be updated and upgraded, absolutely, but to change it every semester is very difficult. So it's really important that we stay on the cutting edge with what's going on in the industry. So uh, the Trends and Special Topics course is a course where I partner with record labels, publishing companies, management companies, where we will actually take one of their fledgling clients be it an artist, a songwriter, a producer, and we will use chart metric to do research in order to create a social media campaign or a branding and um, partnerships campaign for that fledgling artist. And um, now that I know about learn.chartmetric.com and its implementation, in particular, the certification Several of my students are interested in that certification because every record company, publishing company, and management company that we work with uses chart metric. So the students will be definitely taking advantage of the certification, as will some of our faculty, to make sure that they are job ready when they go out into the industry. So the Trends and Special Topics course is exactly what it sounds like. It's all about trends. And we use chart metric in the class primarily as a research tool and a tool to help us build out uh, marketing campaigns. Got it. Can I ask how, how did you come across chart metric personally? You know what? It's interesting. Um, my assistant chair, Chris Wares, I believe is the one who established the relationship originally. Um, so Berkeley is a chart metric partner. And um, I, and Chris, I believe, was using it just for his own personal use, you know, just to stay current in the classroom. Yeah. So he shared it with the rest of us. So many of us are now implementing it in our classrooms. Awesome. But yeah. if you want the truth, the um, the real shout out for chart metric was from Salonco. It's a management company and their head mm -hmm. of marketing, Gabby Mosky. Um, told me that, well, we use chart metric all the time. And I said, well, then we need to be using chart metric all the time. <laughs> and that's when I realized we had already, we were already a partner. I just was not fully aware of that. So uh, that's how we, we came to be using it on a regular basis. Got it. Gabby, thank you very much if you're watching. Um, <laughs> we love uh, Gabby. <laughs> Professor Trinius, uh, the next question uh, is for you. Um, so you teach now four classes at NYU, I think, uh, to undergraduate and graduate students. Uh, it's the A&R Seminar Music of, for Music Business, Music Innovation and Social Change, the Global Music Industry, Popular Culture, Popular Music, Culture and Society, and then now Concert Management as well. Is that correct? Yeah. That yes, sounds like a full that's, that's almost, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's over a year, and that doesn't happen every year. But yeah, that's more or less the, the courses I'm teaching here yeah. uh, at, at NYU. So I, I, I happen to have taken one of uh, Professor Trinius' class, the, the A&R seminar. Um, do you, could you talk a little bit about that in class in particular, about how kind of music and data had played a role in the way you teach your students in that particular course? Sure. So the A&R seminar is a graduate level course designed to get students to understand the complexities of doing A&R in the current music industry. Uh, if you ask, you know, it, it's very difficult to teach a course in A&R because if a &R is a practice. There's not so much research done on A&R until the flow of data started to show up. 
Uh, so this is a very interesting time to be teaching a, a course in ANR because for the first time in the history of this industry, we actually have up-to-date data on impact, the impact of marketing uh, campaigns, impact on and impact and more than impact of actions um, to be able to look at trends. Um, so in in the ANR seminar, I. Uh, I try to focus first on the kind of the psychological aspects that connect music consum music consumers and the music they they listen to. Um, but data has then become a, an essential tool to enable our uh, students to really look at the context of the industry. Um, and I think what the data uh, that Chartmetric provides is really helpful because it provides several points, several um, indicators, right? And the indicators was the challenging kind of is the challenging aspect of ANR. It's like what are the indicators that can tell a label, an ANR team, an ANR department uh, to sign new artists or to um, acquire catalogs, right? Um, so now that we have all of these indicators available at one in one single kind of platform is really useful because um, I'm able to, and the students, and really what I do is more than show the students, is enable the students to do it themselves and challenge them to then identify trends. Um, I think we, because it's an ANR, I try to focus on independent platforms and also something that, that is, uh, uh, Chartmetric provides is uh, uh, the status of their contracts, contract status. So that's really useful to see in the ANR tool uh, on Chartmetric, not only the trends of which artists, where are, trend, are they trending, but also their contract status to a certain extent. I know it may not be up to date, but at least it gives you an idea of, oh, well, this artist is already signed in a, with a development contract for a major label. So maybe don't look there, you know, skip yeah. that one. Uh, and also because it combines uh, sources like SoundCloud, uh, Boomplay, which is really important for me for to understand Africa, consume, consumption in Africa in general and outside the U.S. So mm -hmm. that's that's one of the few things that that provides. So you spend a lot of uh, your career also in the social change um, kind of segment of, of entertainment. Is and it's okay if the answer is no, but is does that music data play a role in, in that part of your life as well? And if so, how, how so? Well, the answer, Jason, is that it could play a lot more. Um, what I feel, and this is something that I've been looking at the tool for since I've been using it for the last four or five years, at least three, four, I don't I can't remember. Um, is that it, 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 it could have more indicators, the platform could have. Because at the moment it, it's it it obviously provides data and consumption, and obviously impact of, for example, things like um, global citizen festivals, artists performing there, is in the context of the UN General Assembly. So you can sort of find correlations, yeah. but because uh, part of the work I try to do in the social change spectrum is to look at the celebrity capital and how artists kind of use the social change and social impact component to beef their their marketing and but also in general they have a, a clear at least the top 100 artists all of them have a, a non-for-profit organization um, but that those data points currently are not there obviously you can search you can go to wikipedia Obviously, you can look at the impact of songs, specific songs that have a social message embedded in them. And that, I did that, in fact, for Logic's 1-800-279-8255, which is, is this, the, the suicide prevention hotline. Yeah. Um, to see the impact, you could, you could totally see the impact of the song in terms of um, um, post-performance during the Grammy Awards of 2019. Uh, the increase in views, the increase in, in, in searches for the song. Um, but yeah, but, but what I feel, and we can talk about it if you like, uh, maybe we could, you know, the platform could have more indicators. No, it's actually something that's come up in the past. And I, I think that's a, a really um, cool direction for us to take that I think is probably very unexpected, but also very, very useful for, I think, a lot of other people. Yes. Um, 
Gavin, thanks for, for the shout out. Uh, good sir, thanks for being here today. Um, Professor Butler, I think the next one's for you. I mean, you know, sure. just like with Professor Trinos, you also have a, a very, uh, you know, a live career outside of academia too, as, as a lawyer and someone who's really well versed as an attorney. Um, does music and data have a role to play in that side of your life? Um, and and yeah, if so, that's... like, how so? That's a great, uh, great question. And I'm going to use uh, Professor Chirinos's response to that is that it could play a bigger role. Um, I, I am admittedly new to data. And I have no, no qualms in sharing that. Um, but it also means that I am highly inquisitive. Um, for example, uh, someone that I forgot to mention who used to work for Chartmetric is Mike Warner. So Mike uh, came to Berkeley this summer. Uh, every summer, the music business program hosts a summer program. And actually, we hadn't hosted a summer program in five years. So this summer 22 was our first program in five years. And um, Mike came to work with the students who were ages 14 and up and I was amazed at how much they knew about data just through the use of their Instagram accounts. But Mike introduced it to not only the students, the young people, but to me as to how I could use this data, um, not just inside the classroom, but outside of the classroom. And it wasn't until, um, I believe it was uh, Michelle when she came to one of my classes, which by the way, I would highly recommend that if you are in academia, that you have a representative from Chartmetric visit your classroom. Um, I'm going to be having um, Michelle come to, or, or you, Jason, you're also welcome to come to one of our department meetings to share the platform with our faculty. So in response to your question, it could play a bigger role, but I think the more we know about the platform, the, the more ways we can find to utilize the platform. And that comes from bringing representatives from Chartmetric to campus, to our classrooms, to our department meetings via Zoom so that we can be educated. Educators need to be educated too. No, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, so thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mike and uh, Michelle. I can see Michelle's uh, calendar getting filled up as we speak, <laughs> um, which is awesome. Uh, she's great. Um, this next question is for both of you, really. Um, kind of generally speaking, and feel free to be as specific or share any stories that you might have in terms of like how your students have taken to kind of music analytics and, and that kind of field. Has it felt almost like se second nature to some? Do some kind of feel like it's a, you know, a fire hose of information to their face and it might be a bit overwhelming? I'm just kind of curious, you know, what that pulse is uh, today with, with some of your students. I think for me, at least, if I may, uh, um, I think it's an essential employment, employability tool. Uh, it, um, it, we, we shouldn't be graduating students without that, that uh, skill, at least the understanding and interpretation and use of data uh, in general. Um, so I think it impacts their employability opportunities. Um, and obviously, depending on the, in the, the type of industry they will try to work in or they are interested in working in, it definitely probably is helping more labels uh, at this stage, uh, uh, not so not not sure or not not so sure about the live music industry and how it may benefit or it, it should benefit, of course. Um, but definitely, all the kind of decisions uh, at any music company are being taken with some degree of data uh, to consider. And whatever it is, you know, chart metric, all star, anything, you know, that is that is the, the interpretation of data. Uh, and factoring data into decisions is, is critical. So I think more than, uh, for example, I don't teach a data course. It's not about data. The course is not really about data, but uh, is the critical use of data, which is the critical use of evidence, basically. You know, all what, all what data is, is evidence, you know. 
triangulation points that you can use to make a more informed decision about investing in an artist, about uh, touring an artist in a certain territory, uh, about you know, uh, signing the length of a contract, uh, the output. I, I consider a lot the, import, the importance of output, you know, in terms of how much, how many songs does an artist actually release or is capable mm -hmm. to release. Uh, and I think that, again, chart metric or data points like chart metric provide that, that evidence, basically. Um, here at Berkeley, um, our students love it. They love it. And especially after Michelle came to our class and um, tutored us on some of the functionality, um, they were almost speechless at and, and amazed by the amount of information that was there that they had no idea was available to mm. them. Our students love it. Um, some of our faculty who live in the data space, you know, where I don't live, but um, people like um, like Chris Wares and George Howard and Ani Johnson and Pam Kerensky, those faculty members live in this space, um, just like many of our students do. You know, they live on social media. They live in Google and, and Instagram and, and Facebook meta analytics. So for those students, sure, I'm not going to say it was like a duck to water, but they were still fascinated and amazed by the amount of information. And for students who are less familiar with it, um, including myself, absolutely a, a little overwhelming initially. Yeah. But just, just at the same time, um, it just made us eager to want to know more, which is why I, I will definitely be bringing you both to, you know, back to Berkeley as many times as possible, because the more information we have, the more we'll be able to utilize it. Oh, and one of my students, Chantel, just chimed in. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, much Chantel. into the chart metric webinar today. That's how interesting. <laughs> That's how interesting. Extra credit for Chantel. <laughs> Thanks, so um, thank you uh, for the kind words. Um, and, and we'd love to be back, uh, obviously, as, as much as possible. Um, uh, you know, one of the stories, uh, our chief commercial officer, uh, Chaz Jenkins, he's, he's based in the UK, is kind of like sharing uh, with us is, you know, when we first started out in about like 2015, 2016, it was very much uh, a narrow user base that was very much, you know, kind of the kind of person who loves like Excel spreadsheets, you know, they love like pivot tables and, you know, manipulating numbers in that kind of way, you know, maybe they're at a major label or maybe they're, you know, a student who just naturally is drawn to numbers and just, you know, attaching it to, you know, the music that they love. And it kind of as, as the years have gone by that, that, that funnel is like slowly opened up more and more. And, and I think what, you know, from his perspective, it, we're now, you know, interacting with a lot of our users who, maybe, you know, hated math, you know, myself included, um, you know, growing up and probably arguably went to the music industry to avoid <laughs> such things. But, you know, it, it kind of, you know, is kind of everywhere now with, you know, the data that we've been talking about this whole time. Um, so I think that's definitely something that we try to be conscious of. So by all means, if, if, if you both have feedback, if your students have feedback, please feel free to, um, to, to let us know, because I think that's something we want to be very aware of, um, not only in the product, but obviously with this, with this website as well. Thank you for that, so, Jason, if I can say, because yeah. we will definitely be sharing feedback because as another person who doesn't particularly like numbers, uh, what I appreciated was that it, you know, chart metric doesn't look like just, you know, the way the information is organized. It doesn't look yeah. like math. It doesn't look like you're just staring at numbers, but you're, you're staring at information. Yeah. So the way it's laid out, we will, uh, it has been wonderful thus far but we will definitely be um, providing you with feedback. Most definitely. Um, and I think to Professor Trinios's point too, uh, you know, he mentioned, you know, he, you know, you don't teach necessarily a, a data class, but it's kind of like present ever. I think that's also something we need to be kind of cognizant of too. Um, you know, everything from how we design our product to um, the way we market it. I think it might be a little, um, too much to be like, we're a music data company. And if you're like, no, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, the kind of thing. You're an information yeah. company. Yeah. 
yeah, it's just like, you know, using Google Maps or Wikipedia, you know, things that we all reach for several times a day. I like, I like, to, I like the, the idea of the evidence because mm. in a way it's, and I, you know, I don't mean the, the exact comparison, but this is like a weather channel. <laughs> the weather channel. Think about the weather channels. You know, the, all the weather data is there, but the visualization is the challenge. Yeah. And that is, the, that is what Chartmetric is doing is, you know, all the weather data is out there. But if, if someone is not there to put it together in, in, a, in a format that we can interact with, we don't do anything with the data. So I think it's, yeah. uh, and, then, and what I try to also encourage my students is to think about evidence in which it, data is a part of it. Because it's a challenge of the qualitative information, you know, the things that are not quantifiable in data formats um, that have to come with, you know, other other ways of uh, researching. Um, so I think what you guys do or what Chartmetric does is essential for that yeah. in the in the in the business of evidence, which is what is the evidence for us to sign this so so artists and give them 20 million dollars or 100 or the you know that what is the evidence and yeah. it's crazy to think that for 75 years or so 85 years they all did it like that like oh well who knows <laughs> <laughs> i love that i love and you know yeah. professor uh, Torinos, you know today they call it receipts yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Where yeah. are the receipts? Exactly. So I love, I love that, that, that analogy. It, it really is the business of evidence that you're in. But yeah, yeah. the kids call it receipts. Where are the yeah. receipts? Oh, the receipts. <laughs> I love both examples. <laughs> no, thank you for that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's given me a lot to think of. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to shout out to the chat. If, if anyone has any questions for Professor Butler or Professor Trinius, please feel free to share it. Um, I want to kind of leave this last question for both of you. Um, Professor Butler, you, like, like we mentioned, you know, have such experience um, as an entertainment attorney and with Professor uh, Chirinos in the kind of nonprofit governmental um, social change kind of sector of, of, the, of the business. You know, can you talk a little bit about advice you might have for some people entering the music industry for the first time and, you know, not only just being well versed in music business, but how to approach kind of how they also bring their own flavor to it. Um, I, I think it's one thing to just you know focus on the things that we all uh, know as obvious parts of the music industry, like playlists or you know how many tickets an artist sells, but also kind of like how they can imprint their own um, personal uh, abilities and talents uh, into that as well. I don't know if that's a little vague, but I, I just, I just want to. See if you had a perspective on, on, on your advice you might have for young people in the music business and making it their own. Wow. Um, well, my, my first bit of advice, um, if I may, is, um, you know what? I always tell students that in order to determine what it is they want to do, they have to combine two things. Um, what they love, meaning what they have a passion for, but also what they're good at. Uh, there are things that we have a passion for that we love, that we would love to do, but we're not. That is not necessarily our gift. That's what I call it. Your gift, the thing that you could just wake up and do without even thinking about it, no effort whatsoever. That's your gift. And if you combine your gift with what you love to do, right? To me, I call that the sweet spot. That's the sweet spot. So I encourage every student first to find their sweet spot. And if you're gonna be in the music industry, there are plenty of them, but you need to find your sweet spot based on your authentic self, based on who you are, based on who, on what you love to do and what you're good at. If you start with that, to me, the rest is gravy. The rest is gravy, <laughs> but you gotta find that sweet spot and you need to um, create a career, create an environment. <clears throat> For yourself. You don't necessarily have to go into and accept anyone else's environment if it's not a good fit for you. But you, once you find your sweet spot, you create your own environment. You create your world. And I see Professor Torino smiling because <laughs> I'm sure, you know, this is the one thing, especially when you're dealing with young people, you know, it's not about where to get a job, how to get a job, how to create an opportunity, where to go. It, it's about, it's none of it 
None of that works if you don't know who you are. <laughs> so that's my advice. Great. Well said. I, I think, you know, I can only echo Professor Butler's point. Uh, um, and to maybe add to that, which is essentially the same, to find your spot and find who you really are. And for that, you really need to do your meditation, your breathing, get to know yourself. Um, but I think in terms of this industry and the key to work in this industry is that, or for me, uh, is this is an industry of vibes. Um, this is an industry really based on the emotional connection of people with with music. Uh, the data just tells us how that happens. But the data is not going to tell us how people really f fall in love with a, through a song or have a memorable a, a memory of something that happened when they were young. The data is not going to tell us that, so you cannot forget the vibes business. You cannot detach yourself from the from the vibes that makes it all happen, basically. So, and I can see, and I see some of students that you know go so so deep into the uh, the administrative side of things that are necessary. You know, I'm not saying that you don't do it; you have to do it. Um, but don't let the vibes fall out. Don't let, don't stop playing. Don't stop going to shows. Don't stop uh, listening to music. Don't stop, you know, you can't. Don't stop supporting emerging artists. Don't just go for the Harry Styles and the, you know, that's great. But they were before they were in the underground. And I always, uh, my focus is only on the underground. I'm like, why am I gonna teach an, an a and r class that looks at the work of Harry Styles. They're already success successful. I want to see who's next. And, and that involves you know, committing to it. Uh, you, you, you have to keep an eye on what is emerging, what is, who are those people out there that are really struggling, by the way, um, that may be the next big thing. And, and, and not support it because they may be the next thing, support it because they have the right vibes, basically. So Yeah. I, I love think that's that. Yeah. I, so, you know, it, on that note, you know, if uh, this is me putting my product manager hat on. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, we do have career stages um, in Sharp Metric, and that's it's a fairly new tool that our, our data science team has spent a lot of time on. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, the Beyonce's and the Drake's of the world. Uh, we have, you know, stages where, you know, artists are emerging and you can have a, a much quicker list. Like we have like 8 million artists and it can develop that short list on, you know, what kind of, um, artist is kind of on the rise in rock or in rap or in pop music in different countries in the world. There's a lot of ways to kind of like divvy that pie up so you can see a lot of those artists kind of making their way and slowly gaining their audience members kind of one by one, which is really cool. And um, completely agreed on the industry of vibes. And um, they also, our data science team, has have found a way to, to kind of get a piece of that at least. You know, I don't think, it, I, I think it's, I think it's too, too much of us to say that we can completely get it. But um, for example, we have this fairly new feature um, called YouTube sentiment. So um, mm -hmm. you can go to an artist's uh, kind of YouTube sentiment um, score, if you will. And it will show you from like, you know, red to yellow to green, looking at the comments. I think it's the top thousand yeah, comments, yeah. if that's right. And then um, we're able to do like text analysis on like, hey, you know, TikTok brought me here and, you know, the song is fire, like a little fire emojis. Um, our team is actually kind of working on kind of developing that. Okay. Um, you know, people are really liking this music video or, or maybe they're not liking um, it, um, which is, you know, it's, it's a technical challenge in a lot of ways, but it's starting to try to find a way to kind of decoding some of that vibe in a, in a scalable way. Um, that's what we're trying to do. Cause you know, I am complete agreement, you know, it's not always about the number of followers, but also how to, how, you know, the artists that are starting to get those followers and some of the feelings that some of their, you know, prospective fans are starting to have on some of their content is something we're trying to kind of find our way through, but I definitely agree that, um, you know, we want to try to find some of that magic and, and display some of it um, in our tool. So. Great. That sounds great. Yeah. That sounds like a great tool, uh, actually. Yeah. That's, I'm, yeah. actually I mean, I'm actually looking at it now. Yeah, uh, kick the tires on it. It's not perfect. I'll, I'll be the first to say it, but um, it's we don't want to let perfect get in the way of of pretty good. 
So that's what we're trying to do with it. Um, and uh, by all means, like I said, I really mean it when, if anyone, you know, seeing this either now or, or later on, you know, a recording, please feel free to send us feedback on it. We want to try to make it as good as possible. Hmm. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to start to wrap it up. Um, is there anything, you know, for, for professors Butler and Trinos that you uh, want to leave as, as final word, um, you know, to our guests or maybe even some of your students that are watching, uh, like Chantal, um, <laughs> um, that you want to kind of uh, sign off with here? Sure. Uh, first of all, um, Jason and Michelle and everyone at the Chartmetric team, I want to mm -hmm. thank you so much for, for having me today. It has been my pleasure to share with not just your audience, uh, the students and the other academics um, on the live stream, um, my experience with Chartmetric and how we intend to continue um, uh, to utilize it because it's been a very, very, very helpful tool for us. Um, I want to uh, give a couple of shout outs. First of all, to Mike Warner, who has been a huge supporter uh, and a fan of mine. <laughs> Um, and Mike wrote a book called uh, Work Hard, Playlist Hard. Absolutely. So uh, please check An out. An audio book form too. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's his book. <laughs> check out Mike. And um, I wrote a book years ago when I was an angry lawyer called, <laughs> uh, called The Music Business is Corrupt or Maybe You Just Can't Sing. <laughs> and it's really all about how to take responsibility <sighs> for um, your career, no matter what you, you embark upon. Uh, the purpose is to not to blame others for your lack of success, but to take some accountability. And then finally, I have a podcast that um, I haven't dropped an episode in a little while, but I, I, it's still so close to my heart. And um, it's called The Bomb Podcast, B-O-M-B stands for Business of Music Bootcamp, where I talk about the business and legal aspects of the music industry. And it's a it's a solo podcast where I usually take a, um, a lawsuit and I break it down into layman's terms and explain <laughs> how what happened to that celebrity could potentially happen to you if you don't have your ducks in a row. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a labor of love. And um, I look forward to getting back to it relatively soon. So thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Professor Trinios? That sounds great. I need to listen to your podcast, to listen to <laughs> the bombs. <laughs> um, nothing to say, but to thank you, you know, Jason and, uh, and Michelle and the team for, you know, allowing us to be part of this, 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 podcast today this show and also for you know making this platform possible uh, i think as i said it's a critical tool to have it's uh, one big tool in the toolbox but i must say is a is a big one it's definitely one of the biggest in the toolbox um that is the you know that is understanding data um yeah just looking forward to see what's next in the in the pipeline for me, probably the only thing I would like to say, since we have today still, uh, for for the past four years, I was uh, advocating and collecting data uh, to ar argue for the creation of a, a Grammy category for songs for social change, oh. uh, and that happened. That actually happened this past uh, May, and uh, and the submissions are open to anyone to submit songs. And the deadline is this Friday, actually. It's the 14th, so in two days. Yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting component because the evidence that we presented to the Recording Academy was essentially a list of songs released every year for uh, that had a social impact co component or so, so, so social impact in its lyrics. And yeah. we presented over 400 songs released in, in the course of four years. And that was the compelling evidence, basically, that Recording Academy said, well, we have to, since there are 100 songs per year released. And yeah. that's, the, that's the goal that in order to create a new category, you need 100 songs released per year. So we proved it with data. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's what the data is beautiful in, you know, they can, it can have those, those applications, basically. So, First of all, congratulations. I think that's an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Two, you. is there a playlist anywhere that we can tap into? That sounds like a really cool list of songs. 
Well, it's going to be part of my, the, this is basically what my students do. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the, the students uh, do that. Uh, the, we compile the database first because, you know, you cannot submit a playlist to a board of trustees, basically. You cannot submit a playlist. You, you have to submit a database. Yeah. That's kind of the language. Uh, but part of that could be the next thing is creating the playlist. Absolutely, I'm gonna I'm gonna start I'm gonna st I'm gonna start that. There are many playlists that exist, but I think what we did was we identified the songs within the Grammy eligibility year mm. only, as opposed to any song. No, actually, just Grammy eligibility year. Um, mm. So yeah, the songs are all out there, but yeah, we should do that. Professor Torinos, are you on uh, LinkedIn or Instagram? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. I how, I, how, do we, how do I find you? Because I want to stay in contact. <laughs> I might have followed you already. Oh, I, I, okay. I, I knew about you. Oh, wow. I'm flattered. And if not, it's, it's nice to know I have stalkers. You do. <laughs> you do. Totally. So, yeah, definitely. Can you share your, your LinkedIn? I'm f I'm looking for you right okay. now as we speak. It may be um oh, I'm Professor Butler by the way on all platforms. So oh, yes, okay, please. on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on I think Facebook, on Twitter, uh, will you name it? All right, I will I will make the effort here and I'm gonna find you. Okay, great. I want to stay in touch. Professors Butler and Trinos, thank you again for, for spending time with us today. Uh, but for now, we will let you back uh, to your students as you continue the fall semester. Thank you. Thank you both so much. It's wonderful to meet you, Carlos. Thank you. Indeed, the same for me. Thanks All for right. And thank you, Jason and Michelle. Much appreciated. Of course. You're very welcome. Take care. All right. Michelle, hello. Hey, that was great. I yeah. love that. That was super cool. <laughs> Um, cool. So uh, that's it for us today, folks. Um, thanks again for joining us on the Hot Music Charts live stream. Stay tuned for our next session, uh, which should be in November. Um, in the meantime, check out learn.trebmetric.com, see what the certificate program is all about. Uh, Michelle, any kind of uh, last words uh, from Amsterdam? Uh, I guess just that that platform, that website is for you all. It's for everyone to access, whether you're a student, whether you're in the business, whether you want to get into it, whether that's your interest out of your nine to five and you're looking to find your way in. You know, if you're already in the business, and you're wanting to progress to a different area, whatever it is, everything there is available to you. And we just hope that it's helpful and we'll continue to create more stuff. Um, more resources that can hopefully help even more. But yeah, feel free to check it out. Let us know what you think. And we'll always be looking to improve as well. All right. Thanks. All right, y'all. Uh, thanks again for tuning in from wherever you are in the world. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon.